It was a well-planned and precise operation. It took police less than two hours to tear through the barricades, which have brought this highway to a standstill for nearly two weeks. They used power tools to take down layers of obstacles. First metal and wood, then bamboo, and the final barrier made from anything the students could get their hands on. On top of the obstacles, protesters put more bamboo and even cement. That makes it more difficult for the obstacles to be moved. It will not only make more people get injured, but also more difficult for emergency cars to pass through. Flanked by police, the protesters watched helplessly. They were warned it would happen, but none of them were prepared for the emotional toll. I am becoming more and more disappointed with the government and more disappointed with the police and I am very distressed that Hong Kong has become like this. In stark contrast, just tens of meters away, it's business as usual at the main protest site which surrounds the government offices. Whether we have to resist, then it depends on what does it mean to be resist. Well, of course, we will set up obstacles uh, to defer the time of police to eliminate but we will not, well, fight with police, and that's the principle of non-violence. This is the biggest challenge yet to the student protesters. They have been occupying three main business districts, and this week they have been losing significant areas. Police have made it clear they will be continuing to take down barriers on both sides of Victoria Harbour. Traffic is now running smoothly through Queensway. There's little evidence that it was once the domain of protesters. The students may not have resisted when police opened up the highway, but they say that doesn't mean their resolve has weakened. They have now created a new front line here in a path between Queensway and what's being called Umbrella Square. It's the main protest site and the protesters say they need to protect it. Divya Gopalan, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong.